Partnership Tax General Concepts Problem 4. At the formation of a partnership, Jackfruit contributes investment stock with a basis of $2,000 and a fair market value of $27,000 and Lychee contributes cash of $81,000. Jackfruit and Lychee share profits and losses as follows. Jackfruit one-third and Lychee two-thirds. When the stock is sold by the partnership four years later for $87,000, the partners must recognize how much gain. This is a great question and it really shows you how unique partnership taxes. Partnership tax or an entity tax is a partnership. It allows for tremendous flexibility. That's one of the biggest benefits of being an entity tax as a partnership over an entity tax as a corporation, C corporation or S corporation, because again, you get this flexibility. So like if you're an LLC, general partnership, limited partnership, limited liability partnership, you get this, this treatment under the partnership tax rule that allows flexibility. Now, one thing that was happening in the past and partnership tax this area of tax is one of the most difficult areas of all the tax law. And the reason why is not, it was not designed originally to do that. It was actually designed to be very, again, flexible, business friendly. It's just, there was so much anti-abuse over the years. This example here shows you the kind of anti-abuse and the kind of special treatment that we have to do when we have a situation where an owner contributes property that has a built-in gain, a built-in gain. Specifically, Jackfruit is contributing this investment stock where there's this built-in gain, the basis of 2000 and the fair market value of 27000 So the idea here is that if Jackfruit, Jack, sorry, if Jackfruit did not contribute this property, the partnership, instead, if Jackfruit was to sell this stock, Jackfruit would have a $25,000 gain. You have 27000 minus 2000 Jackfruit would record a $25,000 gain. $25,000 gain. So keep that in mind. That's what we're going to see here. We're going to see this. Another thing to notice in this problem is you might be noticing that the numbers might not make might might not add up in 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 your in your setting, right? You're saying, okay, well, Jackfruit's contributing twenty seven thousand dollars worth of stuff, and um, Lychee contributes eighty one thousand dollars worth of stuff. Yet Jackfruit gets one third, and Lychee gets two thirds. Well, in the business world. That can happen. Maybe Jackfruit is also contributing some services that we don't know about, and Lychee is not just a money person. I mean, we don't have to put that into the problem because the focus, again, is going to be on this investment stock in the problem, just so you know. That's going to be the focus. But yeah, if you're thinking like that, like, huh, why is uh, Jackfruit only contributing this amount and Lychee is contributing that amount? And if you um, look at two thirds and one third, they don't, they don't make sense. Well, they can do whatever they want that, you know, as long as they're arm's length, that's fine. They can contract between one another in a partnership and they can do that. Right. That's, and we're saying that that's what's happening here. They're arm's length. Okay. So keep that in mind. So the question's asking if the partnership sells the stock, the investment stock again, which is why I brought that up for $87,000, four years later, the partnership must recognize how much gain. Now in this question, I know in income tax, there's a bunch of questions. We go through how much income, how much deduction, how much, or when do we have to record it? Who has to record it and the character? We're not going to focus on the character. We're just going to calculate the amount of gain. That's all it's asking us to do. Partners must recognize how much gain. Okay. Well, let's first think about the partnership. The question's not asking about the partnership. It's asking about the specific partners. But remember, partnership tax, partnerships, any entity taxes a partnership, it's a flow through entity, which means that it's, there's only one level of tax. And the one level of tax, just like an S corporation, it flows through to the owners. It flow, The items flow through. The Basically, the partnership is this idea that everything that's reported in the partnership, it's a conduit where it flows through to the owners. So the items flow through to the owners based on how things are allocated. So flow through to the actual owners. Here, the owners are jackfruit and lychee. So keep that in mind, right? We have this, we have this specific transaction. Well, the partnership on form 1065 will have to report this specific gain. Now, when it's being sold, the amount that's being received, and we call that the amount realized, that's just the amount being received, that's going to be $87,000. So that is $87,000. We subtract away the adjusted basis the partnership takes in the stock. Now, under Section 721 on formation, so at the time of formation, there was a basis of $2,000. And when Jackfruit contributed this stock to the partnership, Jackfruit did not have to recognize any gain. That's how the partnership law works. That's, or that's how the tax law works. Jackfruit has no gain on that transaction, does not have to recognize the $25,000. Jackfruit has a basis in Jackfruit's stock, I'm sorry, in Jackfruit's 
partnership interest. I'm getting ahead of myself thinking about S-Corporations, getting excited for S-Corps. But Jackfruit has a basis in the partnership interest of $2,000, and the partnership takes a basis in the stock of $2,000. Now, because it's stock, there's not going to be any change in the basis over those four years. You can't depreciate or whatnot. So that means the adjusted basis when the partnership sells, we're going to have two thousand dollars we're gonna have a total gain of eighty five thousand dollars so on the form 1065 there's gonna be an eighty five thousand dollar gain that is reported on the actual form now on the form as well on the k1 for the respective partners we're gonna have to break up that eighty five thousand dollar gain between jackfruit which I'll abbreviate J and lychee L so J and L okay so keep that in mind we're gonna have to break that up we're gonna have to break that up now, some of you out there are saying, okay, well, don't we just do one-third to jackfruit and two-thirds to lychee? And that is a good way to start. But as I started talking about, partnership tax is a difficult area of the tax law, and it's because of the anti-abuse. Think about what's going on here. Think about it. If jackfruit, let's say jackfruit is in a really high tax bracket, very high tax bracket. If jackfruit was to sell this stock in a very high tax bracket, $25,000 of gain, if jackfruit was to sell it before contributing, then jackfruit could have to pay, you know, high percentage tax on that. If jackfruit contributes it to a partnership and there's some type of transaction, some type of deal on the side, jackfruit could play games using um, lychee. If lychee is in a lower bracket, tax bracket, which is lower. So that's what people were doing. That's and, and basically Congress saw this and the IRS saw this and they basically put a stop to this by putting in a special rule. They put in a special rule. The rule is called Section 704C. It's a section 704C pre-contribution gain special rule that we allocate, that we're going to allocate this gain. So it's a special rule that we allocate. So a special allocation rule. Allocate special rule. So normally we would just do two-thirds and one-thirds. So if the partnership bought this stock for $27,000 and they sold it for $87,000, we would just get the difference, the $50,000 amount, and we would just calculate, we would just allocate that between the two two-thirds and one-third, that's how we would do it. But when you have this pre-contribution gain, which is what we have here under Section 704C amount, so pre-contribution gain, we're one of the partners here, Jackfruit. They basically contribute property that has a built-in gain, and that is what pre-contribution gain is. So if you see a problem, look for something that was contributed by an owner where the basis is less than the fair market value. You can also have pre-contribution loss where it's the opposite direction. The basis is more than fair market value, but that tends not be what, what's more of a concern. What's more of a concern is the pre-contribution gain with trying to shift, again, with lower, um, lower tax brackets between the partners or among the partners. Here, we have pre-contribution gain. This is how it works. So step one, the first... What we do first, before we get to the two-thirds, one-third between jackfruit and lychee, first, step one. So step one, we allocate the pre-contribution gain to the contributing partner. So we allocate the pre-contribution gain to the contributing partner. The contributing partner here is jackfruit. And we actually already calculated this. It would be if jackfruit was selling it before contributing it. And that's the same calculation here. So it's just, okay, if jackfruit, we ask, if jackfruit was to sell the stock before contributing, what would happen to jackfruit? Jackfruit would have an amount realized, which is AR, we saw that earlier, of $27,000, which is the fair market value at the time contributed, minus jackfruit's adjusted basis of $2,000. And remember, adjusted basis is just a number we use from a tax standpoint to keep track of tax previously taxed capital. That's all it is. Just use basis to understand that's that's what we use to calculate gains. That's the best way to think of it. So Jackfruit would have a gain of $25,000. Of $25,000. That's, that's the first thing we do. So that's step one. And then we go ahead and we give that $25,000 of gain to Jackfruit, to J. So going through our $85,000 gain, we're over here on the left side now, we do our step one gain that we calculated, and that's going to be $25,000 to Jackfruit and zero to L because Jackfruit was a contributing partner. All right. Step two, we take the remaining gain, and then we apply our normal allocation. Okay. We take our remaining gain, and we do the normal allocation, which here we're told Jackfruit gets one-third, 
and Lychee gets two thirds. And the idea is that when the partnership acquired it, it really got it at $27,000 and any appreciation since then, which is a 27,000 to 87,000, that, that difference in gain, that amount, which is going to be $50,000, that amount is going to be, I'm sorry, is <laughs> not 50,000, uh, $60,000. My apologies to him, you know, getting ahead of myself in the math, that $60,000 difference in the $27,000 to $87,000, that difference is going to be attributable to after it was contributed and then we allocate normally. That's the idea of what we do here to, to stop the this possibility of what we call anti-abuse, again, shifting to lower um, people, to lower tax brackets. So the remaining gain, we take the $85,000 total that we calculated already. So that's $85,000. We subtract away what we just allocated in step one. And that's twenty-five thousand, and that means there's sixty thousand left. So sixty k left to allocate. So if we just do sixty k, two thirds and one third to J and L, jackfruit and lychee, well J jackfruit has one third, so that's going to be twenty thousand, and then lychee has two thirds, so that's going to be forty thousand. It's going to be forty thousand. So that is step two. So step two, go here on the left, and I'll make it bigger. We're going to take 20,000 to jackfruit, 40,000 to lychee, and that's it. Again, it was the difference between the total gain, which we calculated here, which is the part what the partnership reports, right? Because they're selling the stock at $87,000. They got a basis of $2,000 when it rolled, when it carried over from jackfruit's basis, when jackfruit initially contributed it, and they have an $85,000 gain they report. But the, the question is, how much do the partners recognize? Well, you have to go through this two-step process. First, we allocate the uh, 25,000 pre-contribution amount as if jackfruit sold it before contributing it. That 25,000 all goes to jackfruit and none of that tw portion goes to uh, lychee. And then the remaining $60,000 of gain, right? Because we had 85,000 total minus 25,000 that we just allocated, $60,000 of gain left. That is then, then allocated one third to jackfruit. Like we're told, jackfruit gets one third and lychee gets two thirds. So 60,000 times one third of jackfruit is 20,000 and uh, 60,000 times two thirds to lychee is 40,000. So we get, we get 20,000 to jackfruit, 40,000 to lychee, and we're going to have 45,000 total gain to jackfruit. So this is the total gain for each partner. And we're going to have 40,000 to lychee. And the way you can check your work is that the two amounts of the partners should obviously add up to 85,000 and they do. 45,000 plus 40,000 equals 85,000. And you have just learned a, an anti-abuse rule in partnership tax. And this is the kind of stuff, this is actually one of the more simple rules in partnership tax in terms of anti-abuse. But this is the type of thing where um, again, partnership tax is not meant to be challenging or difficult, but it can be made difficult because of what pe what taxpayers did in the past to kind of um, play games, you know, go through a loophole and shift to other taxpayers in a lower bracket and save taxes. So what happened was Congress came in, so no, 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 you can't do that, and they put this rule into play. So it's kind of interesting you see this. Very important to understand because one thing when you're comparing S corporations versus par partnerships. S corporations don't have anything like this because they're meant to be simple. You're not going to have anything complex like this. So keep that in mind. With an S corporation, you could technically do this. You could, you could technically allocate to other owners, but the idea is that there's other limits in place that might prevent you from being flexible and whatnot in those cases. So hopefully Congress thinks that will stop it. So make sure you go over this, understand the steps, and go through this in stride, practice this very important rule in partnership tax.